breathtaking beauty of a spring afternoon in historic Annapolis, but the serene setting about to be overrun by a rugged rivalry. The Black Knights shocked Syracuse earlier this season. Now Army sports the number one ranked defense in the nation. The midshipmen the second best at stopping goals, but Navy can score them in bunches as well. Army Navy set to shine in Annapolis next. Capital here at Annapolis, Maryland, part of the backdrop for this latest rendition of the Army-Navy rivalry in lacrosse. The first meeting was back in 1924. Now they'll get together for the 83rd time here on CSTV. Hi again, Jason Knapp, along with Sheehan Stanwick Birch and Sheehan. It's Army Navy. Doesn't matter what sport, what meaning, when these two schools get together, it's certainly special. This is the biggest game of the season for both these teams today. They circle this game before the season even starts on the calendar. Both teams are in need of a win, and what better way to do it in the Army versus Navy game? Well, Navy had a tremendous start to the season. 8 0, best beginning for the midshipmen in two decades, and then the wheels came off. On the road at Georgetown, Navy had a lead at halftime, but watched the Hoyas get six second half goals, including that one from Brendan Cass. And, and Georgetown able to hold on for a one goal win. And then last Friday night, Maryland got the game tire with seven seconds left. And then Dan Group, the game winner in double overtime, another one goal loss of heartbreak for the midshipmen. As we look at the starting lineup for Navy, Sheehan, the middies need a team effort to turn the tide today. They definitely do. And Tim Paul, what a welcome addition in his first collegiate start against Maryland last week. Get two goals and an assist. And then you've got Billy Looney, the Twarden nominee. He's such a fantastic midfielder. Got a great outside shot. Expect to see him ripping a lot from the outside. And on defense, are Aiken anchored by Jordan Danola, very physical defender right there. He's going to make it very tough. Anchors the second toughest defense in the nation. Colin Finnegan waited his time, spent three years as the understudy to All-America Matt Russell, now gets his time to shine, and the senior has been delivering things, leads the nation in goals against average. And speaking of defense, of course, Army, as we mentioned, has the top-ranked defense in the nation, but boy, the offense has struggled, ranked 50th out of 57 Division I teams, Black Knights need to find a way to put some goals in the net. They do. They're lucky that they've had so many wins without being able to score more than nine goals the entire season. They've got to put some numbers on the board. Even though today is going to be a defensive battle, their offense needs to start finishing their shots. And we'll look at the lineup that Joe Alvarisi will put on the field for Army. Well, you know, this is going to be a team effort for them. They, Brooks Corbin is a sophomore and leads the attack. Again, the whole attack needs to be shooting better and finish those creative opportunities. And in the midfield, they're led by Justin Bachmeyer. He leads the team in scoring, a, a real role in transition as well. And on defense, a junior, Jay Larson, he's key in, in transition. He's a left-handed defender. Again, he's going to need to stop a lot of the weapons on the Navy team today. Adam Fullerton has been big in just about every game this season. Again, one of the top-ranked goalies number-wise in the nation, helping backstop this talented Army defense. It should be a good one here in Sunsplashed Annapolis. Army, Navy, the pageantry, the history, the rivalry resumes next. right here. Excellent. Thank you. Congratulations, Thanks. Mr. Bloom. You're a homeowner. Thank you. Don't worry about a thing. Don't get blindsided by hidden fees. Call Ditech today and get a low fixed rate home loan. No surprises. Call 1-800-71-FIX today. Ditech, a GMAC company. They wear the school colors for a few fleeting years, leave behind moments we'll always remember, and take with them the spirit to excel in all they do. 
That's why the NCAA Corporate Family provides scholarships, sponsors youth programs, and supports all 23 NCAA sports. They know that while the excitement of college sports is shown in moments, the value lasts a lifetime. The United States Naval Academy develops young men and women morally, mentally, and physically to become officers and combat leaders of character for the Navy and Marine Corps. Start your journey at the United States Naval Academy. The Patriot League, the number one conference in the nation for overall student athlete graduation rates. We are eight prestigious institutions producing both fierce contenders on the court and competitive students in the classroom. The Patriot League represents the model Division I conference for scholar athletes. We are Army, Navy, American, Lafayette, Holy Cross, Colgate, Lehigh, and Bucknell. We are the Patriot League. Today's scholar athletes, tomorrow's leaders. NCAA Lacrosse on CSTV. Massive drop behind the head and they score! Where warriors become heroes. Oh my goodness! Conquering opponents with electrifying speed. Oh, oh, oh. What a move and a score! In epic battles. Knocked to the ground, huge hit! But in the end, only one will be crowned. The Old Spice King of Spring. Watch Princeton versus Cornell, Saturday at 3, only on CSTV. CAA Lacrosse on CSTV is presented by Old Spice Red Zone Body Wash. Back here in Annapolis, set for Army versus Navy. Number eight midshipman against the unranked Black Knights, Joe Alvarisi, second year as head coach, former Army assistant in the 90s, now back to lead the program after Jack Emmer, the legend, retired a couple of years ago. Meantime, Richie Meade, 13th season in charge of the midshipman program, 2004 National Coach of the Year after leading the Middies to their first national title appearance since 1975. Of course, Navy came up one goal short to Syracuse that year in this rivalry. Boy, the midshipmen have been dominant. 11 straight wins over the Black Knights. And we'll see if Army can stem the tide and pull out its first win since 1997 in this great storied rivalry between these two programs. Navy in the white tops with the gold shorts. The Black Knights in primarily black here on the road in Annapolis. And William Wallace wins the faceoff. He's averaging about 70% success rate, but Army able to steal it away. That's going to be a key, Sheehan. Can Army thwart the great face-off work from William Wallace and come up with some good defensive stops here and takeaways in this game? It's definitely going to be a real something to watch for today. The extra opportunities, getting turnovers on the clears and getting those face-off. Army needs as many possessions against this Navy team. We talked about the propensity of Army to not find the back of the net. Again, John Walker, John Obringer, lots of talented players. 70% of the offense from Army graduated last year. So a whole new host of attack players for the Black Knights trying to get things going. Here's Ryan Chase, senior from Webster, New York, running in the midfield. In front, shoots, and a stop made by Finnegan. Now Navy looking to clear. The midshipmen had some issues on the clear two games ago against Georgetown. They're averaging about 70% on the season, but were 18 of 32 in that game as the Hoyas were able to capitalize on that in their comeback victory. Now the midshipmen set up offensively for the first time. You know, a big game for Navy, too, just in terms of getting their confidence uh, back. They had two one-goal losses. They were both winnable games against Georgetown and Maryland, and now against Army, the arch rival. They need a win here, both for their own team's confidence, for the postseason, and also just for pride. Richie Meade talking about his team having a little bit of a hangover after the Maryland loss on Monday. Tuesday practice was better. Certainly the emotion level this week gonna be there when it's Army-Navy. Can the execution level be there? It is right away. Billy Looney with the shot and score and the mini strike first. 
You know, Billy Looney, we talked about him in the open using that outside shot. He's just so dangerous. He shoots over 100 miles an hour and just is able to just find the cage very easily. This year he struggled a little bit with shooting, shooting at under 20%, but when he gets it right on target, it's very hard for goalies to stop that. And watch a quick little dodge right there and then just a rocket with his right hand in the top corner. Absolutely buries it with the right-handed laser. 12th goal of the season for Billy Looney. He had four goals against Army in the regular season meeting last year, and he strikes first for Navy in this one, and the midshipmen lead yet again here at home. They have led every game going to the break this season, so they have shown the ability to score in the first half, and Wallace with a clean faceoff win. Nick Barabito deals it behind the net. The game against Maryland last weekend, the first game in which a Navy player has been held without a hat trick, so they have scored in bundles. And also, I expect Morabito to really come out on fire today. The game against Maryland was the first game he hasn't scored in his entire career. And snapping a string of 40 in a row. Terrence Higgins handling and dealing it off. Now Sean Standen swooping in and hits the pipe. Well, Army dodging one there as Navy hit iron, and now the Black Knights push up field. Both these teams' defenses ranked one and two, and the goalies one and two in the nation as well. It's really going to be a defensive battle, but I think you know whoever puts the most obviously puts the most points on the board is going to win this game. And Navy's had a relatively much more easier time this season than Army has. They've had those opportunities, they just haven't been able to finish. And Coach Alvarici says the confidence hasn't gone down. They're in the right place at the right time. They just need to take the extra second and make sure that they finish those shots. Now the glaring idea has been shooting percentage, averaging just 22%. Coach Alvarici said the goal for this team was 35. That's obviously pretty good and pretty high, but still, if it hasn't been the shooting, sometimes it's been inopportune passes, and that one picked off. Great defensive work by Jordan Donola to step in front of that pass. Navy brings it across midfield. Terrence Higgins with a head of steam, able to deal it off. Low lefty shot, save made by Fullerton. Great save by Fullerton. He's been so key in most of Army's wins. The team really relies on him. He's just such a presence in the goal cage. And Marabito had a good look there from the angle, but Fullerton able to get the stick down. Four saves with it, 15 or more saves. So far this season, four games with 15 or more saves so far this season for Adam Fullerton, the junior from Liverpool, New York. And triggered this Army run early in the season with 16 stops against Syracuse, the kid that grew up just outside of Syracuse in central New York. Uh, able to win the game at the Carrier Dome. First win for Army there ever in the Dome and their first at Syracuse since 1972. The game against Syracuse for Army was early in the season. It really turned a lot of heads nationally in terms of them up upsetting Syracuse. They've struggled a bit as of late and again are looking to get back on track with a win against Navy. The mids here on the attack setting a pick. Army certainly aware of what Navy will try to do. Pick play didn't work there. Now cruising in and a flag on the field. Army going to get called here for the foul. Basil Duratsos. Able to zoom in, and he's fouled. Paul Wojcinski with the foul. Watch that high hit right there. Basil's have also been a significant role player as just a freshman. He and Tim Paul have been such welcome additions. Both had great games against Maryland. Again, we'll see men's across 101. Personal fouls, minimum of one minute. Technical fouls are 30 seconds, and the penalized team plays man down. Both the Army and Navy teams have struggled as of late the past couple games in their man-up opportunities. So now the first extra man opportunity of the game for Navy. And we'll see how the midshipmen work here, operating at a 37% clip on the man-up. 14 of 38. And that's among the top dozen or so nationally. And that's even with going over 5 against Maryland last week. Yeah, two games since 
Navy has had an extra man opportunity and a goal, and they capitalize right here. William Wallace buries that with a low rocket, and it's 2-0 Navy. Perfect. This gets Navy back right on track where they wanted to be in terms of their EMO percentage. William Wallace was in the right place at the right time. A great dropped his stick low, was able to fire the ball hard, high, and just watch him set up right here. Gets it low, and then he's actually screens a little bit. It's stick side, but gets it past Ful Fullerton. So William Wallace bags his eighth of the season, and Navy with a two goal lead here in the first five minutes and change of this opening quarter. Not the way Army wanted this game to start. Army needs this next possession is key. Off the faceoff, scramble situation. Navy comes away with it. Matt Bitter picks up the ground ball. And he'll surge down the field and set it up for the midshipmen. Important Sheehan for Army to come out and try to gain control of this game the way the Black Knights play. If they're able to have a lead, maybe they can work the clock to their advantage. But right now, this is a dream start for the midshipmen. It definitely is, and when it starts with the face-offs, Army really needs to get those extra pos possessions so they can have more opportunities. Billy Looney deals it off, shot high. Good chance for Tommy Wallen, the senior from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey, but he fires it over top of the net. Navy, though, will retain possession. One of the things that Coach Alvarisi was worried about against playing against this Navy attack is that they can just burn you inside and outside, and really that their defenders need to make sure that they are cutting down the angles, forcing them to weak shots, but they've allowed a lot of outside shots and good looks on the cage. There you see Joe Alvarisi. Not going to win this game with 45 shots, he says. He understands what his team is about, what they need to do to succeed. And they need possession of the ball and to capitalize on their opportunities against a potent Navy offense. Ian Digman, bounce shot and a score. 25th goal of the season, the team leader, Ian Digman. Fifth on the career points list at Navy, and he adds to his legendary totals here with the mids with that left handed shot. It's a great move by Digman behind the goal cage, trying to set a pick and was able to get his defender a little bit off guard right there, gave himself a lot of room, and then just shoots a nice left handed low shot right there. The goal cage Fullerton's looking behind the cage, trying to play the pass right there, and Digman just gets himself in a great opportunity. Ian Digman. Adding to the Navy lead, 3-0 in the early going for Navy here in Annapolis. What drives you? Fame? Fortune? Following the crowd? How about being part of something much bigger than yourself? As a citizen and soldier in the United States Army Reserve, you'll train near home and serve when needed. Call 1-888-851-ARMY now. Hear what it's like to be a soldier from real Army Reserve soldiers. Plus, get a free messenger bag. Explore over 120 careers. Get help paying for college. And see if you qualify for an enlistment bonus. Call now to find out how you too can become Army Strong in the Army Reserve. Five keywords as we continue with our out. the number one conference in the nation for overall student-athlete graduation rates. We are eight prestigious institutions producing both fierce contenders on the court and competitive students in the classroom. The Patriot League represents the model Division I conference for scholar-athletes. We are Army, Navy, American, Lafayette, Holy Cross, Colgate, Lehigh, and Bucknell. We are the Patriot League. Today's scholar-athletes, tomorrow's leaders. Where will West Point take you? Building on a tradition of excellence, over 40 majors, engineering, science, cultural immersion, physical and military training, all in a moral, ethical environment. For over two centuries, West Point graduates have served America with distinction, influencing the course of history. The West Point experience will prepare you as a leader of character. Where will West Point take you? To your place in history. You got a gift, son. With that gift comes a lot of responsibility. That's why we're gonna pull you out of school. We're gonna get you a big time agent. We're gonna hold out for the biggest pro sports contract possible. Okay, Pop. We're gonna make heaps of cash.
four games that you play against Army, you'll remember that forever. I don't think there's any team you want to be more than Army. No matter how either team is doing record-wise, it's always an intense game. And everyone just gets excited around here, and it's like a buzz around. Everyone just ready to go. Navy coach Richie Meade looking on his team, following up with those sentiments. They are playing with intensity here and execution as well. 3-0 lead. Our notch rival Army here in the early going. NCAA lacrosse presented by Old Spice here on CSTV. The Black Knights now imperative that they get a good scoring look here. I don't think it's any coincidence that the Navy Senior Day is on the same day that it's Army-Navy, the last home game. For Navy. Even though they'll host the Patriot League tournament, they decide to honor the seniors today, and we've seen the three seniors score. So they definitely want to end their careers on a great note in the last home game. Jason Pyre, sophomore, had control of it behind the net for Army. Now deals it out high. Ryan Chase controls. Chase, one of just three field players that are seniors. There are only five total on this Army squad. It is a youthful bunch trying to garner experience and Again, trying to come up with some continuity on the offensive end. Kevin LaRusso, good one-on-one -on -one attack player, sophomore from Rocky Point, New York, gets it back. Hill knife to the goal, shot partially deflected. Navy giving chase. Loose ball, and Hunter Wakeland comes up with it. And again, Army will move with the ball upfield, especially in transition. They'll push the issue, but if it's not there, they are very content to grind out possessions and look for good shots. And that's what they're going to need to do, and it doesn't put them in a good position to go down three to nothing. Then every shot and opportunity counts, and you don't want to be giving up the ball away if you don't need to. LaRusso bounce shot. May have gotten a piece of the iron, and Finnegan was there as well. It does look like Finnegan got a little bit, bit of that off his stick right there. And shooting against a goalie like Finnegan, again, you've got to make sure your opportunities count. It was a great roll dodge right there, getting into the inside. Brooks Corvin able to turn and score it. 13th goal of the season, leads Army in the goal category, and look at the move. Corbin comes up just and then shoots right off of the move. Again, you can see Finnegan, he plays high out on the crease, which opens up the, go the goal for Corvin to see and get that shot right past him. Great little hesitation, turn, fire, and score. And the sophomore from Odenton, Maryland, able to get Army on the board. That's the eighth straight game that Brooks Corvin has scored a goal and it's a biggie here for Army to get them on the board on the road at Navy. Another face-off win for the midshipmen. And Army watches Navy set up right away again. Billy Looney had that rocket to start the scoring for Navy. Now passes it off. You know, I think one of the things that Navy's learned in their two losses against Georgetown and Maryland is that even if they're up, they can never settle. You know, both Georgetown and Maryland came back and ended up winning those games, but they, they can't let down. Fullerton with a great stop on the bounce shot by Garatzos. And now Army looking to clear. Hit it midfield with the Black Knights take advantage. They got possession of the ball. Now another big dump down as Army still fights for it. This game is always physical when Army and Navy, there's so many high emotions on the field. Durazzo's hits a man, and finally we've got a whistle. Again, we'll, we'll see some of the hits. Tons of emotion on this field. Again, Army getting a couple goals scored against them early on doesn't make them happy, and you know Navy is not going to let down. Wallen in the middle of a couple of those licks administered by Navy. You know, really in that, that was almost an unsettled situation for Army. They got the ground ball. They just need to move it quicker. The Navy defense is really just going to come out and swarm and try to get the ball right back. And Army just needs to move it to the open player. He just should have gotten the, the ball rid of his stick a couple seconds early. And Durazos, ooh, coming in with a cradle, deals it behind the net. Dingman turns it out. Looney right in front. What passing by Navy, and it pays off in a goal for Morabito.
Beautiful ball movement right there. Starts with Dingman, and then Looney, it looks like he was going to wind up and take that shot, which got the defense to freeze, and then finds Morabitu right on the crease, and he's able to just dunk that one right in. Again, watch Digman firing it up to Looney. He's one, looks, does the steps, looking like he's going to shoot. And that made the defense get paralyzed a bit and sets Morabito right up there on top of the crease. Easy, easy score to make right there. And Morabito had a hat trick at West Point against the Black Knights last year. In this game, he gets goal number 16 of the season, and Navy reestablishes a three-goal lead. Nine or more goals in eight of ten games for the midshipmen this season. And they're almost halfway to that total here in quarter number one. And they have done big damage on Army as well. Navy scored eight or more on Army in 16 straight meetings. So they're almost halfway to that mark as well. Corvin, the goal scorer, sends it out to the side. And Army will reset up the offense. A look at Ryan Chase, possesses, uh, possesses a great shot, second team all Patriot League performer, as you see the shot stats to this point. In favor is the, of the midshipmen. Paul Wijinski, junior from Levittown, New York, one of a handful of players that attended the Military Academy Prep School. Tries to center in front, and that one's knocked away. Big hit by Army, and Corbin controls. Army will need to come up with those second chance opportunities, whether it's on a wide shot or just a missed pass. They can't let Navy scoop up those extra possessions. The Army struggling scoring at times, but the attackmen, we talked about their youthfulness in this squad as far as playing time goes, but Joe Alvarisi gives them credit, says they're all very good riders, and that's somewhat of a lost art as far as the Army defense. It starts with the guys up front, and that was a key instance there where they were able to come up with a steal. And he mentioned that, you know, a lot of midfielders like to look at their stats by how many goals they produce or assists they have, but he likes to tell his players, you got to worry about the ground balls and everything else, stuff that may not show up on the scoreboard, but definitely helps the overall team win. Well, Russo turned away from the net and now sends it further behind the cage. Justin Bachmeyer looks to surge in front. Pass in front, trying to link up with Wojcinski. And that's knocked away, and Army controls again. Finally, the ground ball gobbled up by Navy, but given right back. Hops right into the stick of Chase, and Army will set up again. And this is textbook Army offense right now. They are content to work it and try to find a good patient shot. Jason Pyre sends it in front. Chase trying to line it up and thought about shooting it before he actually had control. He does retain possession. Corvin. Looking to come in front. And now a great read there in goal by Colin Finnegan. Able to thwart that pass coming back across the top of the net. Well, Navy's defense and goalie are right on track, just holding Army to one goal. However, Army, they're averaging, holding their opponents to a little over five goals a game and already have let in four. Richie Mead looking on Joe Albarisi as well. Denver Notre Dame talented meeting of squads. Jeff Samarja that was last year's news. Notre Dame's latest two sports star Will Yeatman freshman attackman also plays tight end for the Fighting Irish football team. He leads 11th ranked Notre Dame against Denver tomorrow in South Bend. Don't miss a second of the action right here on CSTV late first quarter in Annapolis Maryland it's Army Navy right here right now the midshipmen with a three goal lead on the Black Knights in the 83rd edition of this lacrosse rivalry between the service academies just under a minute to go looking like Army's going to try to wait and get a great sh shot opportunity to go into the half Brandon Butler 
has control. The second midfield line out there right now for Army. Alex Rhodes scoops it up and he'll work behind the net. Corbin shoots. That one hit the post. Again, Army fortunate to get a couple of nice hops and they'll hold again here with 20 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Rhodes, bounce shot there, save made by Finnegan. Tough angle right there, especially for a right-handed player with the way Finnegan's playing his angles. Heaved up field, and Army holds on to it as the first quarter comes to a close. Navy here at home, been very dominant over the years in this facility and it continues right now midshipmen on top of the black knights 4-1 after one Take a look at what's coming your way today on CSTV. It's the 2007 Air Force Academy Wing Open Boxing Championships. That's at 2.30 Eastern. Then at 4.30, it's NCAA Baseball presented by Easton San Jose State against Nevada today. The U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland is the undergraduate college of the Navy and Marine Corps, developing midshipmen morally, mentally, and physically. We inspire our graduates with the highest ideals of duty, honor, and loyalty as they dedicate themselves to a rewarding career in the Naval Service as officers in the Navy or Marine Corps. The four-year journey that is a Naval Academy education prepares our graduates to assume the highest responsibilities of command, citizenship, and government. Start your journey at the United States Naval Academy. was responsible for bruises, abrasions, and a few stitches. After I graduated, I became a nurse. It only seemed fair. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. Pressure? Yeah, we feel pressure. We play about 60 games a season, and every moment counts. When it's game time, we only have one shot to prove that we can win. It's our game. A long throw. That is a fair ball. This one is deep. Champions of the Big Ten. CSTV has the most college softball. NCAA softball presented by Easton only on CSTV. ECU at UTEP, Saturday at 6. Things going well for the midshipmen here at home. 4-1 the scores. We set or get set to start the second quarter. One of the biggest lacrosse games of the year comes up after us. Duke and Virginia, fourth-ranked Blue Devils, the distractions finally behind them. They shift their focus to the third-ranked Cavaliers. Get the complete story of this colossal showdown. The Duke-Virginia lacrosse pregame show follows us here at Annapolis at 2.30. And the game coming up, Virginia and Duke, number three and number four, up after us here. Right now, it's number eight Navy on top of unranked Army, 4-1. Black Knights were ranked in the top 10 uh, for a time earlier this season, but Army has lost three in a row. Navy trying to snap a two-game slide, seeing themselves fall down to the eighth spot in the national rankings. This game has national implications for both teams. The Army needs it to get back into the Patriot League tournament, and Navy again for seeding purposes. 
for the NCAA tournament. It's pretty much a, sh a sure thing they'll be in the tournament, but you know, with such a great start to the season, they need a really some top losses and make sure that they don't lose to teams that they shouldn't lose to. And Tim Paul, turn, save made. Fullerton had that read perfectly. We talked about Tim Paul, first start last weekend against Maryland for the freshman. Two goals and an assist, replacing Bruce Nekanicki. He was hurt in the loss to Georgetown. Nekanicki going to have knee surgery and will be gone for the rest of the year. A tough blow for Richie Mead and company as they watch a, a guy who's really a game changer with his uh, maneuverability on the offensive end have to sit and watch the rest of the season. It definitely is. Uh, the neck and neck loss was a huge blow, but you know, having Tim Paul come in just a freshman, he was playing midfield, he's got such a quick first step, made a big impact coming down the attacking end. Army takes possession, Jay Larson able to send it upfield. Andrew Supiano. Gets it behind the net to Corbin. He's got the lone goal for Army to this point. One of the things that Army wanted to work on was forcing some un unsettled situations, either create creating them or taking advantage when they did have that. And right now it's hard to do that when you're down by three goals. Your coach is telling you you need to make every opportunity count. You need to make those shots on goal. Great opportunity. So it's hard to make sh make that extra pass or the pass before when things are not settled down. You don't have anyone, everyone in their right positions. But Army's going to need to make some, take some chances. Quick chance there, that one off the side of the net. Another and that's good, a good opportunity right there. Going to say another good opportunity. And for Army, it's been different things in different games. It gets number one Cornell. That was a one-goal game with three minutes left. Army had the ball, couldn't convert, lost that game to the Big Red. They hit four pipes in a game against Hofstra, which they only scored three times, another loss. And certainly they have not been able to come up with big goals at crucial times, and it's killed them here in recent times over the season. And as we've seen, the longer this, game's, this game goes on and the more they have to really grind, and that net's going to become smaller and smaller, and they're going to start gripping the sticks tighter and tighter. You've been in scoring slumps before throughout your career. What's that like? What can you do to try to break out of that funk? Oh, not me, but <laughs> <laughs> you, really, you just got to keep shooting. You know, it's uh, you know, I think Michael Jordan had the quote, you miss 100% of the shots that you never take, and you just got to keep going. Make sure you put yourself in the right opportunities. You don't want to force things, and it's hard to kind of take either take chances and then distinguish between forcing things and, and doing, you know, making bad decisions. Well, Dingman able to beat the double team to get the shot off. But Fullerton able to get his big stick down and make the stop. You know, I also think the coaching staff really plays a role in that, especially when a team as a whole is struggling shooting. They need to still give people the green light to go to goal, make sure that they're setting up the key attackers that should be scoring but aren't, and give them some extra opportunities. Sometimes it really just takes a couple good, good goals, and you kind of get right back on track. And a lot of it becomes a confidence issue. You want to make sure that, above anything, you don't let it start making you question your game because the second you start questioning your shot you're, you're already in trouble well, army has possession here again bachmeyer watch by the long stick of brendan t now trying to work off the pick in front bachmeyer t gives a swipe there and sends the army player further away from the net Shot there from Wojcinski goes wide. Going to double team we see from Navy right there, which opens Wojcinski up a little bit. Another decent opportunity for Army. Were a couple of bodies screening in front. But still, that would not on net for the Black Knights. And Jason, that's exactly what you said. Uh, you know, a lot of the, you look at Army statistics, they do get a lot of shots per game. A lot of them are not on goal. That one is on goal, and it's in the net. Wojcinski able to work his way closer and find the twine. And Army has now gotten back within two of the midshipmen. Big goal for Army right there. Again, gets himself in a little bit better position. Goes to the goal cage, and then this time decides to fire it low. We just saw a shot go wide high. And again, if you're missing the goal cage, a sure thing to get it closer on cage is firing that ball low. Beats his defender right hand and gets some time and room in there. And again, because Finnegan plays so far out, you can see how far he is out on the crease. It's, you know, shooters have to mix it up. It's not typically what you see. Most goalies play far back. Maybe goalies in the past have played up high. 
and for different shooters, depending on your angle, can really open up some angles. Yeah, that was a tough one, able to beat the double team and the goalie from a difficult angle. And Army takes advantage. Now the face-off win. Ryan McClure puts it in front. Finnegan stepping off his line. And loses his stick, able to come up with it. And Navy grabs the ball. Boy, frenetic situation. You talk about unsettled plays. Army almost capitalized there. They almost did. They need to finish on those opportunities. You had him right in front of the, the crease. And what Finnegan does, since he comes out high, he wants you to shoot high. And what you need to do right there is drop the ball low. His stick's high, your stick's high. You got to drop it low and around him. And by playing up high, you just you make yourself bigger look inside the cage. And, you know, really army there. It's easy and tempting to try to shoot the ball high, but you just got to get it in the goal. Again, both of these goalies, along with these defenses, one and two in the nation. And they certainly have done a... A solid job thus far. Duratsos cutting in. Watched by Sean Reppert. Now Looney trying to work off the screen. Lost his footing for a moment, but kept it alive for the middies. Wallen looking to room. Flag goes up as he hits the deck. Flag on the field. Great opportunity. Got himself, weaved himself in. Got a nice shot opportunity off. Have a, have a chance to go at it once again. Again, very physical. He's going to move himself in between two defenders right there. See a foul called. Foul is going to be against Craig Massey, a long stick junior defender for Army. So now second extra man opportunity of the game for the midshipmen. And the slashing is the call, so now a minute man advantage for the midshipmen. We watch them execute the first time around on the man up. That Dingman in the center has got a great inside shot. And there he is. Couldn't find the handle. Backhand and a stop made by Fullerton. Uh, Dingman couldn't find the handle right away. Then Able to flick it onto the net, but Fullerton got a piece, and Army able to clear up field. Huge turnover by Army right here. Oh, need to just get a handle on it. Still fighting for it there, a little bit of a scrum, and a timeout called by Army. Well, the Black Knights able to stop Navy in that situation. Can they get another goal and creep closer in this one? First half here from an Apple. Right, go through the door. Go, 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 go. All right, still left. You look like you're really into this. You guys want a real challenge? As a soldier in the United States Army, you'll find out what you're really made of and how far you can go. Explore over 150 careers, help pay for college, and learn if you qualify for an enlistment bonus. Call 1-888-395-ARMY now for a free copy of the America's Army game and this new interactive DVD. Hear what it's like to be a soldier from real soldiers. You ready to take this to the next level? Call now to find out how you too can become Army strong. Need cash? Borrow up to 125% of your home's value with a fixed rate freedom loan from Ditech. With Ditech, you can feel confident that you're being taken care of every step of the way. Call Ditech now, 1-800-71-FIXED. Eleven years of fencing and three years of law school teach you a lot. For him, it's confidence. For me, it's pride. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how your child could become one of the many student athletes who go pro in something other than sports. Where will West Point take you? Building on a tradition of excellence, over 40 majors, engineering, science, cultural immersion, physical and military training, all in a moral, ethical environment. For over two centuries, West Point graduates have served America with distinction, influencing the course of history. The West Point experience will prepare you as a leader of character. Where will West Point take you to your place in history? Time to take a look at what's coming your way today on CSTV. It's the 2007 Air Force Academy Wing Open Boxing Championships. That's at 2.30 Eastern. Then at 4.30, it's NCAA Baseball presented by Easton San Jose State against Nevada today.
quick. This one goes in. Tenacious grit. They are so relentless. Exceptional talent. Tough handle. Beautiful play there. Her moves tell the whole story. Open player. Shot score for Northwestern. Spring swings with NCAA women's lacrosse. And another goal. It's a hat trick there. Watch Northwestern take on Johns Hopkins Friday at 6, only on CSTV. Little spring fever here for some of the midshipmen in attendance. The casual look as the Mideast lead Army here 4-2. Take a look at the U.S. Lacrosse Coaches of the Week. The Rutgers men doing a fine job. Big win over Loyola and Yale as well. Honored Amanda O'Leary. Big win over Princeton. Yale trying to do big things in the Ivy League. It certainly went over the Tigers. Will help. Congratulations to the U.S. Lacrosse coaches of the week. Well, here at Annapolis, Navy looking for a 12th straight win over arch rival Army. 4-2 here, second quarter. Extra man opportunity for Navy. Army did a good job of stealing it away and trying to work off some time. And now the Black Knights give it right back. Seven seconds left on the EMO for the mids. They probably will come up empty in this situation, uh, situation, but they do have possession. Billy Looney at midfield. Okay, out of the box. Working it towards the offensive end. Connors. And now finds himself in position. Tim Paul. Or check it. William Wallace able to send it upfield. Navy's been in control of most of the possessions, the face-offs, and goals scored. Right now, they can take their time in terms of setting up a scoring opportunity. You talk to the folks at Navy about this game, the Army game coming at a good time. First back-to-back -back losses for Navy since they lost four in a row in 2003. And the first back-to-back one-goal losses since 2001 when they lost their first two to UMBC and UNC by a goal each. Now Army comes up with a key turnover. Nice pass by Digman right there. You just have to honor him. He's just got great size and presence on the field. When he makes that roll to the cage, you need to protect him from scoring. He's able to just dish the ball off at times and come up with some great assisting opportunities. Army trying to clear, bounces around, hops right into the stick of Justin Bachmann. You saw a graphic right there with turnovers, about even. But, you know, Army's really the team at, at this point. They've got to limit those turnovers. Since they haven't had so much success in terms of their shooting percentage and getting the shots on cage, they can't make unforced or forced turnovers. And against a stingy defense like Navy, it's easier said than done. A moment ago, you saw a close-up of Pat Fullerton carrying the ball for Army, twin brother of Adam Fullerton, uh, the goaltender for the Black Knights. And there is a unforced turnover by Army. LaRusso with the pass, and it went awry. Joe Albarisi talked about going through this offensive struggle. It's one of those things as a coach, nightmare situation you don't want to have to deal with, but trying to stick to the philosophy of playing to strengths and keep going after what you believe is the right thing to do and sticking to your gun. And it's hard. I mean, as we talked about, they lost 71% of their offense from last year. They had John Walker on the team, someone they could always put Army on their back and carry them to a victory. And when you have a lot of new faces and different people in the mix, it's hard to get everyone on the same page. But again, it's not the lack of trying. They're getting good opportunities, good shots. They just need to finish those shots. Their defense has kept them in a lot of games. All the games, the four that Army has lost, they have been winnable games. And right now, the Army defense doing a job here in the second quarter to keep this one close. Shot there goes over the net. Duratzos had a lefty look. Another talented freshman. And again, the Army defense, best in the nation. Only giving up. About six a game, but so far, Navy already has four. But none here in the second quarter. 
Duratsos retreats. Marabado shot to score. Nick Marabado gets his second of the game. The junior from Binghamton, New York. After being held scoreless last week against Maryland, Marabado's come out on fire. Great job by Basil right here, finding Marabado on the side, and then he just gets over his defender, steps, and very hard. Look at the split right there, Fulton. Very hard for him to get to that shot. He saw him going one way, anticipated a little bit wrong in the opposite direction, and couldn't get over to make the save. So much attention fostered on Dingman and Looney. You gotta respect his outside shot. Marabado is able to find areas to get open and play off that, and certainly a scoring force as well. 17 now on the season two in this game and once again it's a three goal cushion for the midshipmen and the black knights push it into the zone again LaRusso now sends it back to Ryan Chase here's Chase Long stick of Victor Barger, able to come out, push him back. And you can see Navy's defense extending out, putting pressure and sending the double teams early. Great defensive play right there. Good read by the Navy defense. Higgins comes up with the turnover, and the Middies look to clear. It's smart by sending those double teams early. You're getting Army in a position to be frantic. They know they need to score and make good possessions. But once you send that double team, they're just not making the pass quick enough to get it to the open person. Duratzos sends it behind to Marabito. A good save by Matt Guido. Navy scoring first of this game and scoring most. And again, they have controlled uh, the action. You can see a little bit of the defense of different styles that both Army and Navy are playing. Army's setting back a little bit further, not putting as much pressure that Navy's doing on the opposite end. And as, you know, Good opportunity right there, but as an attacking unit, if you're able to put a lot of goals on the board, it gives your defense, again, more opportunities to be a little bit more creative, take some chances. If you pressure out and somebody beats you, and especially if you've got a great sliding team like Navy, you're able to make up for some mistakes. Chase cruising in, looking to get free with a right-handed shot. Stop made by Finnegan. I think you made that save outside the goal cage. <laughs> Very high. Really stepped out to cut down the end. Right <laughs> that midfield Navy player takes a tumble. Army's got the ball. Now they should look to move. I mean, this was one of the things that Albarisi wanted to see his team do when they get those turnovers, get the ball, start switching fields, get people open, open when the Navy defense isn't able to get set. They credit the Joe! midshipmen though Kevin! for getting back into shape and setting up and slowing down Army and forcing them to go back. Out high to that patient look. Lijinski, great pass in front. Shot over top of the cage. You will not find too many better looks than that. And Pyre, you wonder if he thought there would be pressure there, rushed the shot and missed it high. You, know, you just got to shoot low. You know, again, it, it's one of those simple things that the, the shots are going, you know, it's huge velocities that you're able to beat a goalie by going high. If you shoot it low, you just, you know, look, you just got to beat the legs of the goalkeeper. Much more room shooting low than shooting high when you got the stick and how many the shoulder weight to go by. And Durazzo's coming up with a loose ball. And he'll bring it across the midfield strike. A couple of goals for Durazzo's against Maryland. And freshman there with two. Tim Paul had two, so half of the Navy output against Maryland last weekend by first-year players. Always looking to get that mix of experience and youth and keep the program building and Navy certainly has that senior day group of 11 seniors saying so long to their Navy lacrosse careers although they will have one more home game as Navy has clinched home field advantage for the upcoming Patriot League tournament great move in there by Looney beautiful move Get, got himself a nice face dodge right there to get him an inside shot good look at the goal cage 
Another pick set by Navy. Wallace wheels around that to Dingman behind the cage. As it's swatted away. Good work by Adam Hanzinger to poke it out of Ian Digman's cross. Now LaRusso. Doubled there quickly and able to pass it off. Navy knocking it away. And Andrew Dow fighting there with a long stick. Another big hit. Another Navy turnover. Now here with under a minute to go. Will the midshipmen hold it here, Sheen? I, I expect them to take the last shot right here. Probably about, well, a little bit soon. <laughs> Maybe not. Why wait when you've got a rifleman like William Wallace able to wind, fire, and score? Again, Army just gave Wallace a little bit too much room right there. He's able to set up, plant his feet in position, take a step, and then just drop a stick low and hit it top shelf. Such great accuracy. Second of the game for Wallace. Don't forget, stay tuned for the Nissan halftime show. We'll get you back to the field house in New York. Greg Amsinger will have an extended preview of Duke, Virginia, number three and number four of the nation coming up after this game. That's coming up at halftime. We'll bring you the highlights and statistics from this one as well here at Annapolis. Navy with its largest lead of the game right now. Four goals at 6-2. Final 20 seconds. Can Army get one back before the break? And Brandon Butler getting isolated. Now in front, low shot and a score. Great execution for Army, and it comes at a huge moment. They needed a goal, and they get one before the break. Big possession right there. I didn't know if they were going to get it off right there. It almost looked like that pass was going wide and over the head. But watch them come in. The double team goes. Navy's defense is super aggressive. And then just a beautiful shot. You can see Finnegan. There's two Navy defenders right there on the left-hand side of the screen, which actually screened Finnegan. He wasn't able to see that ball come out of the stick and went to the opposite side. Well, Jason Pyre, yeah, with that fantastic release, gets the goal ninth of the season for Pyre. And Army able to get one back before the break. But Navy still in control here at Annapolis at halftime, a 6-3 lead as the teams head to the locker room. And they'll be back with more at halftime in the second half in a little bit. But stay tuned after the break. We'll get you back to New York. Greg Amsinger has the Nissan Lacrosse halftime show as Navy leads Army by three at the break. There's a place where baseball is still pure. Great play at third, just got it. And the 